A couple of years ago, I was um, fortunate enough to be invited to serve as a trustee for my seminary. And the responsibility is really pretty light. Uh, mostly, it involves uh, attending some meetings uh, out in Austin, serving on the committee. So twice a year, approximately, I'll go out to Austin uh, for our trustee meetings and spend two days. Uh, last year, I invited Jennifer to go with me so we might um, have a little time together in, in the place where we both went to graduate school and um, just enjoy some time. And I was about halfway through the first day's meeting, and it was coming up on lunchtime when I was um, sitting there in, in the conference room, and I, I got a text from Jennifer. Uh, and it, it, th there were no words, but it was a, it was a picture of a sign, uh, Franklin's Barbecue. And I don't know if you know anything about Texas barbecue in general or Franklin's Barbecue in particular, uh, but Franklin's Barbecue, from what I've heard, was supposed to be the best Texas barbecue there was. I, I, was, um, I was so excited to get the text, so I, I texted Jennifer back and I said, are, are, are you at Franklin's now? And she texted back that, that she was, that she had gone on a walk from the hotel and uh, had, had ended up at Franklin's and, and the line was not very long, so she got in it. Typically, people begin to line up at Franklin's at about 6 in the morning and they're, they're out of barbecue by 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So I couldn't believe my good fortune, so I texted Jennifer back and said, um, we're wrapping up for our lunch break. I will be there in 15 minutes. So I, I jumped in an Uber, and 15 minutes later, I'm standing in line at Franklin Barbecue, just uh, beside myself, excited about uh, our good fortune. I thought the line seemed to be moving along pretty easily, pretty well, and I... I I just thought, this is great. We'll be able to get in here, eat lunch, and I'll be able to make it back to the seminary for my 2 o'clock meeting without being late. Uh, nobody will be the wiser. Um, how wonderful. And we continued to progress along, and uh, I was counting my blessings. And <clears throat> when we were pretty close to the front door, uh, a couple of cars pulled up uh, next to the restaurant, and about 10 people got out. And, and they made their way up to the front of the line, and they greeted their friend who had been standing in line about five people ahead of us. And all of a sudden, the, the short line in front of me doubled in length. I looked at Jennifer, and I said, I, I can't believe this. Okay, did you see that? Those people all broke in line. I said, I, I've been standing here an hour. We've been standing here an hour, and, and they're just waltzing right up to the front of the line. And, and Jennifer looked at me, and she, she kind of grinned, and she said, yeah, you've been standing here for an hour. I've been standing in line for almost two hours, and you've already forgotten that, that you did to all those people behind us what they just did to us. I was a little ashamed of myself, but, but still, you know, in my heart of hearts, I was a little, uh, I was a little jealous. I was a little upset at, at, at what they had done. It violated, really violated my sense of fairness, and my sense of justice. And that, it's, it's that sense of fairness, it's that sense of justice that we're confronted with in this morning's parable. In, in today's parable, Jesus tells a story about a, a vineyard owner who needs some work done. So he goes out and he hires laborers, and in the morning he hires a group, and then he goes back out at, at noon and he hires more workers, and at three o'clock he hires more workers, and Lo and behold, at 5 o'clock, he hires even more workers. And then at 6 o'clock, when, when the day's work is done and the harvest is in, he calls all the workers together and he begins to pay them for their, for their work. And he starts with those who were hired at 5 o'clock and he hands them a full day's wages. And you can just imagine those people who started working at 3 o'clock or at noon or at 8 o'clock in the morning sort of licking their chops, thinking, well, this is my lucky day. If he's paying the people who work for an hour a whole day's wage, I can just imagine what I'm going to get having worked three, five, or eight hours myself. But, but when he finishes paying all the laborers, what they all discover is they each get a full day's wage. And, and you know without me telling you the thought that crosses their mind, this is not fair. We all have, I think, a, 
maybe an overly developed or keen sense of fairness or justice in the world. And this parable really flies in the face of that sense of justice and fairness. I think it flies against our sense of justice or fairness because we imagine that, that we're the people who've been working all day long. We imagine we're the people that complete our assignments on time, we're responsible to our tasks, we're, we're conscientious about the commitments that we make and keep. We, we stand there right beside those people, we imagine, who have been working all day long. And, and we imagine somehow we should get more. We, we deserve more. We've earned more than the people who just sort of slid into line at the last minute. It, it really violates our sense of fairness and justice. And I think that's why this is not one of the most beloved parables Jesus tells us. It's because it really violates our sense of fairness. And just as we experience that moment of, of discontent or jealousy, I, I think God's voice maybe interrupts our thoughts and, 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 and pretty clearly tells us that this is not a story about justice or fairness. This is a story about grace. And, and we're brought up short. And I think it's in that moment we realize you know, when we imagine only sorrow, we encounter just a bit of joy. When we're confronted with darkness, we, we encounter a bit of light. When it seems to be night all around us, we discover the, the break of day. What we discover and what we remember is through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we, we don't get, none of us, what we deserve through God's grace, through God's love, through God's generous and overflowing abundance. We get more than we deserve. We are showered with grace. So I wonder, when we're confronted with that reality, when we see the world through God's eyes, why is it? that we tend to cling so desperately to our own puny and difficult definition of justice, when if we could turn loose of that, we could take hold of God's generous, abundant, overflowing, and loving grace.